Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be reviewing the Hollybro Shuriken X1 Racing Quadcopter. So after we um, unbox and inspect it and set it up, we'll go out and we'll do a full review on this one. I'm going to go out to the park. I'm going to record my FPV goggles. I'm going to put a GoPro session on there so we can get some high definition video also. Anyway, regardless, let's go ahead and without further ado, go ahead and unbox this thing. So there are a bunch of specs there. If you'd like to just get a quick snapshot of them, go ahead and pause the video and you can kind of read all these specs if you'd like. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and start unboxing it. So just opening the box initially, we've got some stickers. Hollybro Shuriken stickers if you want to put those on. We have a parts list, so if you want to order extra parts, here you go. And here are the specifications. So it is a F3 flight controller. Just a one sheet, four page manual here. It's got an exploded view of the main board there with all of the peripherals that's included in there. And then it kind of actually really easily goes and shows you how to set it up uh, in it looks like beta flight. So you're gonna be able to set everything up. You can also set up your your LEDs. And I really think every quad like this, this is kind of a bind and fly quad, should really have a little instruction sheet like this. This is great. DSMX fast and FR Sky binding instructions there on the bottom. So really great that they're including that. Anyway, uh, rest of the quad here, here's a top foam piece. And definitely repurpose that for some other stuff. And there's the quad kind of sitting in the bottom there. Let's go ahead and take out all this other stuff before we go ahead and take that out. Extra set of propellers. As you can see, it's already got some mounted up. And these are Mr. Steel 5x4x3 red propellers. So they give you a whole nother set that's great because you are going to be crashing and breaking those. We've got a battery strap. Looks like a battery strap in this bag and also two battery straps in this bag. Maybe one's going to be for a camera mount. And we've also got our camera OSD set up here and then some other cable cables for cameras and some zip ties in that bag. For changing FPV frequencies, they give you a little card to keep handy. We've got a circular polarized antenna. Not sure if this is right or left polarized. Really wish they would label it on the antenna, but um, I may be using a better antenna than this. This looks like a fairly cheap one, but it does have a really rigid stem there. You see how that's just like a really rigid wire stem. So at least it will put it where you, it'll stay where you bend it. And here's that session GoPro camera mount I was talking about. So you can just squeeze a session in there and pop it on the top here and zip tie or Velcro that on. So you can go ahead and have some high definition video while you're racing or flying. It looks like that's everything in the box. There's no batteries or anything included with this one, so you are gonna need to provide your own battery. So here we go. So here it is. So look at this thing. So this is like a super pro version of a X-Frame racer, which is a 200 millimeter. It's got 30 amp BL Heli ESCs per the specs on the box. And the motors here are F40 2600 kV motors. So it looks like pretty good motors here. And we've got these lock nuts on top of the motors to mount up the props. So they, they won't be going anywhere. XT60 connector here for plugging in our battery. And these are some thick cables here. These are 12 gauge. So expect this thing to really, you know, scoot along here. On the back, we can see that we do have our VTX screen here so you can know what channel we're on, um, what frequency, and also this has uh, two power settings for the VTX. I believe it's 200 milliwatt and a 600 milliwatt settings on the VTX, which you can change all from these two side buttons here. So we have our, this is actually labeled as power setting for the VTX. And then this over here is actually labeled as channel settings for the VTX. So it's just going to be a series of clicking, clicking and holding uh, on both of these to cycle through the channels, frequencies, and our power. A nice uh, plate here of LEDs so you can adjust those in the beta flight or clean flight if you want. It comes flashed with beta flight. So that's what I'm going to be just leaving it at beta flight. So check out these arms. So these are like, uh, looks like three millimeter true carbon fiber, 3K carbon fiber 
arms throughout and all the carbon fiber should be that quality in this one and look at that camera angle so you can adjust this thing all the way up to that looks like 80 degrees if you wanted to and if you want pull it down to not quite straight but maybe about 25 degrees so you know if you're not a super pro racer put it down to about here this is the lowest it can go without moving this cross brace here if you wanted to go lower you could put this cross brace up here push the camera down lower but I'll probably be flying with it somewhere around this area I'm not super pro racer but I don't think I'll be able to fly it straight up like this so I'll probably be flying it like around here so of course the higher you go up the higher you can pitch it and go faster forward if you know how to fly like that so here's our two receivers antennas just kind of popping out probably what I'll be doing is putting some uh, zip ties here and shrink wrapping them to just come out the back here and hold them up they do give you some zip ties in the package I don't see any shrink wrap really so I'll have to provide my own shrink wrap and then just shrink wrap those to the zip ties so they're up and out of the way then this is where we're gonna go ahead and mount our GoPro session camera it's got a nice little ledge here on top where we can just sit that right in slide in your session GoPro camera in there and go ahead and strap it in with looks like you do have a velcro slit here so put the velcro in there and go all the way around this thing and so you'll have a nice sturdy guard and session camera mount there you can see that we also have a micro USB connector here for adjusting the beta flight or clean flight settings you can put clean flight in it if you want to and that's pretty much it you know um, not too much more to go it's just ready to go just bind your controller tune if you want on the bottom we can see that it's got this X pattern really thick plates on the bottom it's got this battery guard here so you know you could take this off if you wanted to but this will protect your battery a little more and this thing should be able to take 4s no problem nice thick battery strap and that thing's not going to break anytime soon nice and grippy here oh yeah and then there's our um, VTX antenna connector our video transmitting tenor antenna connector so this will just screw on right here if you wanted to use the stock antenna taking the uh, lens cap off the camera look at that camera so this is going to be a nice wide angle high quality camera here you can see that it's a wide angle but it is guarded with this uh, flat clear shield here anyway that's really it in a nutshell the Hollybro X1 let me go ahead and get everything uh, set up bound up and we'll go ahead and cut to the flight test go ahead and do a full flight test on this in the park and right afterwards I'll go ahead and do a immediate pros and cons just tell me what tell you what I thought I'll have the video of the GoPro session up that this thing takes and also the video of the FPV recorded in my goggles so you guys can see how it is how it actually is performing with the FPV in flight all right let's go fly this thing all right guys so we're at the park with the Shuriken X1 the Holly Bro and I'm gonna do a park flight here I'm gonna do FPV also land sight so first off what I'm gonna do is do an FPV without a high definition camera on here I mean a line of sight without a high definition camera just so you can see how it looks line of sight test out some of the power do some flipping so you can get a visual of it line of sight and then I'm going to throw on this I got this hero session 5 camera and it fits perfectly in here into the mount um, this 3d printed guard mount that this thing comes with and just velcro it right in like that so i'm going to pop that on top and go ahead and record in my goggles what the fpv camera's seeing and also i'll be recording in high definition what that shows as well okay Welcome to so let's go ahead and start this thing up got the tyrannus configured with the modes here so turning on the tyrannus first Turning on the Holobro X1, and you can hear it beeping. That's a lost alarm I have it programmed to. If I just flip this switch up to the middle, that's disarmed, and then all the way forward is armed. So you can see how the props spin when it's armed. So let's go ahead and fly this thing, line of sight real quick, and see how it does. So arming right away, lifting off. So you see how smooth this is. I went ahead and programmed, you see these LED lights on the back. So you give it more throttle. Whoa, this, wow, this thing has some punch, man. You give it more throttle and they actually change color from like purple, blue to red or something. 
Anyway, um, this is self-leveling. You can see how it's attitude mode. It's eventually getting back to level. Let me see if this is actually Horizon. Yeah, so actually this is Horizon. I don't think I put in attitude mode on this one. It's just strictly Horizon and Acro. So if you do keep turning the stick, it will flip. So let's do a punch test. Here's a yaw rate. Whoa! I think I bumped up the yaw on this a little bit, the rates. So it's a little quick. See how speedy that yaw is. Whew, that's fast. You don't want to be careful with this one. You know, this is a pure racer. So let's do a punch test from a hover to full punch up. Oh my god. Yep, this is quick. One of the fastest ones I've ever reviewed, that's for sure. I'm not going to really be able to do a full stick forward and punch because it won't um, stop when I'm pushing forward. But let's just try to do as much as I can forward and, f and forward flight and punch test. So forward and punch. Whoo! Thing is fast, man. Let's come back. Holy smokes. You can see when I give it throttle, the lights turn reddish. That's so cool how you can adjust that in beta flight. Anyway, um, okay, so let's try to do some flips. So a right roll. You can see how in Horizon, I was kind of like tilted like that. I let off the right stick and it self levels. You know, normal thing with Horizon mode or some people call it Ratitude. Anyway, front flip. Hey, so that was maximum, maximum um, pitch. So that looks like the maximum speed, at least what I have it set at. So you can do nice low flips with this. Not gonna go too quick, but you can see that, how easy that was to flip. I'm just holding the right roll all the way to the right. Probably hard to see that with my hat cam, but let me try that again really low. Hopefully you can kind of see my hands in the picture there. Let me try it one more time. Right roll. Ready, go. So I'm just giving a little punch, full stick to the right, and then when it levels off, giving it more gas, and then letting off the stick. Anyway, this thing is a beast. It is awesome. Let's try some power on rolls and flips. So I'm going to go ahead and give it some power while I'm rolling, slowly. Whew. Yeah, so I can't wait to try this FPV in just a couple seconds. Wow. Yep, wouldn't have thought any less of this one. It's a beast. Two, three, four, five. Woohoo! You can do some crazy stuff with this. Acrobatics like crazy. Letting off, watch this. Let off the stick and it falls straight, flat, horizontal. And look at the lights on the back, they'll turn blue. Not sure if you can see that. Get a little closer so you can see that. I'm gonna full throttle off and they're gonna turn blue. Look at that. So you don't have to worry about it tumbling out of the air when you let off the stick. Letting off fully totally keeps its, um, its level. Two, three, four. Oh. So Horizon, this thing is so easy to fly with its self-leveling. It just corrects itself. If it's upside down for too long, it'll just level itself out. Woo! Feel that wind on my face. Yeah, so that wasn't even full throttle when stopping it. That was like half throttle right there. So this thing's gonna be crazy. Um, with FPV, but let's just get a little bit of a closer look on this thing while it's flying. You can see how stable and nice it is here while it's up in the air. You know, a little bit of a drift. Let's try to do a little quick roll close up. Yep, awesome. Uh oh oh man so it just kind of what's it doing all right so it kind of started tumbling out of the air in horizon and it wouldn't correct itself that's the lost beeper you see how i have it set if i pull that to the middle the beeper goes off 
So, not really sure what happened there on that one. I was getting a little crazy with it. And it just started flipping out of the air. Maybe something with the, um, you know, flight controller PID settings. And it didn't seem like I could save it. I was kind of, I was trying to um, give it some more throttle and I just leveled out the sticks and it kept doing this weird cavitating fall. So, you know, a little bit of a con there, straight out of the box. Um, I think this, this battery is gonna be just about spent. So let me go put another battery in and put on this Session 5 camera right here. Get this recording, get my Fat Sharks recording, and fly with you on an FPV session. Okay, so it looks like after that tumble to the ground, I was pretty high. I was like maybe, I don't know, 50, 60 feet, <clears throat> and uh, tumbled to the ground, and it was actually spinning the propellers on the ground in the grass for a bit, and nothing happened to the propellers. Looks like they're strong propellers. You know, these are the um, HQ 5x4s, four, four, three blades, tri blades, and no kinks, no bends, no nothing, so I'm just going to not touch them and leave them on. Now I really like this um, session mount they give you. They give you this 3D printed mount and with this provided strap. And look how tight and solid that thing fits in there. That thing's not going anywhere so I have the camera. It only has one position I guess unless you put some spacers. So I match the FPV camera just to be about it looks to maybe be about like 35, 40 degrees. And I'm just going to use the stock antenna mount. I believe this is a right hand polarized antenna. So I've got a right hand polarized antenna on my goggles. I'm just going to use um, these cheap Amway ones on the Fat Sharks. And I'm just using a Venom. Uh, th this is a 1300. And this is like a 6570C. Um, I'll have the links in the description if you guys are interested in what I'm using here. But let's just go ahead and boot this up. Just wanted to kind of show how the setup goes before I go ahead and fly FPV. And it looks like the this strap is covering the power start button for the session, but it looks like you can press it in hard enough just to get it going. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up with the FPV and uh, have a little co-pilot flight. Let's go ahead and arm this thing. The motors will spin up. Taking off. So everything should be recording. I'll have that stuff up on the screen. You know, getting some lines in the screen. You know what it might be is um, it might be my um, fat shark goggles. This receiver I may just have a problem. Not really too sure. So anyway, just gonna fly around in Horizon. Let's try flip. Wow, it does really nice and smooth flips. Let me see how the FPV is when I do go behind this tree. So a little bit of breakup, not too bad, but you know, just like any FPV, you're gonna get some breakup. Um, so we are in horizon mode, just gonna fly around a little bit, get our bearings with this one. So I start going a little bit quicker. So you go around a tree like that, make sure you punch up so you get your line of sight a little better. I'm gonna go switch into, um, do a couple more flips. See that? I let off and it just went ahead and self-leveled itself. I'm going to go ahead and go into um, acro mode now. So switching that button all the way down. And here we go. Uh-oh. Somebody's in the field there. I'll watch out for them. So we just want to go ahead and try the acro on this one. All right. So anyway, just gonna fly around here. Let's try to go around here and just do some little bit more aggressive flying if we can. Wow, so this thing's handling really well. Punch up, come down. Woo! You can see how quick and easy this thing is to fly. Slowly getting better at acro mode, you know, I'm not the best. But good enough for stuff like that. <laughs> Through some trees, go up. Let's try a little bit of this kind of stuff. Upside down. Back forward. You know, once you start getting better. Be able to do kind of like stuff like that. I'm not the best at um, these maneuvers, but I'm getting better. This thing definitely is nice and smooth. 
Woo! I can see how easy that is to control and then punch up, get out of precarious situations. I'm hoping this thing... Okay, I got a little low battery flash on the screen when I punched it. So that's cool. So it looks like in the FPV, you will get like a low battery indication. You know what I mean? So anyway, I'm just flying around here. I'm just kind of flying fast. I'm not really going through too many obstacles, but I'm just trying to show how quick you can go fast with this one. Let me go under this tree. Yeah. So stuff like that is really simple. Wow, I'm really liking this X1. Look how quick this thing is. Oh. Okay, so we crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go ahead and get this thing. I think that's going to be it. Let me go ahead and get this and we'll do a pros and cons. Okay, so um, here it is. It crashed on kind of low, either low battery or I just got too close to the ground. But it's flashing, it's beeping, so I could easily find it. It is in a low voltage alarm, so even if I push on my last beeper, the low voltage will be better to locate it. So pretty cool. Let me go ahead and um, just power this thing down here. You can see that we did break one propeller. Let me power this down and then we'll go through a quick little pros and cons. Telemetry lost. Turn off the controller. Anyway, quick little pros and cons. You can see that we did break one propeller. That's not really a con. That was either my fault for not paying attention to the low battery or I just got too low and hit the ground, tumbled out of the sky. It sounded like it was trying to lift back off, but it looked like one propeller broke, so it couldn't do that. Anyway, um, really impressed with the durability on this thing. Look at the camera, I was just sitting there, not even scathed at all from the tumble. I was going pretty fast coming through here and it may have even hit that um, kind of tire post thing, that concrete tire post. I'll have to check the video and see how that looks. But pleasantly surprised with this one. It did really well, man. I'm really excited to um, fly this more. This is one of the ones that I think I can get a lot better with. FPV and Acro Flight with the Shuriken X1. Uh, it did have plenty of power, incredible amount of power. Uh, you could see the flight timing up on the screen. I'll have that up in the um, FPV video. The goggles were recording. I was also recording the session so you could see how smooth the um, high definition video looks. I was only recording in 30 frames per second, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with this thing. And as you can see, I was recording at the same angle with the FPV and the camera just to give it a good representation of the angle of flight. Um, but nothing really bad I can say about this except for that line of sight horizon tumble out of the sky. I uh, tried everything I could do to save it and it seemed like it would just keep tumbling and fell. So with this one maybe there's some settings you can tune to tune that out if you do fly in like horizon ratitude mode. but. If you're going to be buying this, you're going to be needing to learn how to fly in acro air mode or air mode. Basically the same thing, just with a little bit of differences. Uh, anyways, guys, I'll have this guy in the description of where you can get battery, session cam, and the Shuriken X1. Also, I really like the Fat Shark goggles. If you're getting into like pro racing or really hard into racing and you got some money to spend, uh, this stuff is pretty much the best for this kind of this kind of sport. The Tyrannus um, radio here, Tyrannus Plus, and all this stuff I'll have in the description in some links. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope it was informative to you. I definitely enjoyed this one. Also, I have the battery in there too. This is the Venom. Pretty good cost, cheap batteries, and they seem to perform pretty well. Anyway, I hope you liked that review. I really like this one. Big thumbs up for me, except for that little tumble in Ratitude. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.